Am I the asshole for selling my house since my roommates thought I was ripping them off? I own, have a massive mortgage on, a house in a HCOL city. I have four roommates. I have the basement suite and the upstairs bis rented to one couple and two single people. They know I own the house and all of them were recommended to me by friends or family. I still required a lease agreement and security deposit as well as first and last month's rent. I just was willing to rent to them at below market rate because I didn't have to advertise or arrange for a property manager. Between the four of them I collect enough to cover the mortgage and utilities with a little left over. I save my money and use it to pay for major repairs and maintenance. We I will be starting a new job in a different city in the new year. I knew about this back in late October. I offered the couple an opportunity to take over the basement suite in the new year for a little bit more money. They would get a massive bedroom upgrade and a private living room, bathroom, and kitchen. They agreed and let me know that they were planning on moving out in one year so they would be willing to sign a one-year lease. I asked the two singles if either of them wanted to take the master bedroom that would be empty. They both declined but asked if they could turn it into a home office for them. I said sure but they would have to cover the rent for the room. They think I am being unreasonable. Since I will be making more money off the couple they think I should keep their rent the same and let them have the room for free. I offered it to them for 80% of what I was getting before. They called me a selfish asshole for taking all their money. Even if they took the deal they would still be paying less than market value for a single room in our city. It turned into a huge fight with the people who referred them to me calling me a greedy asshole for trying to suck money out of their friends. I don't need to deal with any of this. I found a property investor who was willing to buy my house and honor my current leases including the new one for the couple. Unfortunately for the other two renters their leases are up in February and I imagine that the rents will be going up a fair bit. But that isn't my problem anymore. So now everyone they know are angry with me because these two people will most likely have to move into a crappier living situation. I feel bad because if I wasn't moving I would stay and deal with it. But it is just easier to walk away. Not the asshole. If you weren't going to be there to take care of the house you would have to pay someone to do it. This seems like the right decision for you. They blew their sweet deal by being greedy themselves. Not the asshole. Why would they think they would get the room for free? Also you own the place so it's yours to sell to whomever you wish and now that it's theirs they can do whatever they like with the property. Not the asshole. Dot. Everyone wants something for free and that they want you to allow them to use space that they refuse to pay for is ridiculous. It's their own fault that they got other people involved and made this untenable for you. Don't carry any feelings about it. Walk away with your profit and enjoy your new life. Am I the asshole for telling my son's girlfriend I would never consider her kid my first grandchild? I have two sons. Jason, 26, and Grant, 31. Jason has a GF, Kelly, 26. Been together on and off for a couple years. Jason tends to change GFS like he changes underwear, and this one has been quite the ride, full of tons of drama. She also cannot stand to not be the center of attention. I will add that both have had multiple other relationships through this with other people. I am not for the relationship, especially since Kelly has a 10-year-old son that is being dragged through this, but, my son is an adult, and he can make his own choices. Grant also has a, now, fiancé, Tori, 28. She had not become fiancé at this time. They have known each other for over a decade, were usually casually dating, or, just friends, and have also had an off, on type thing over the years, but it was more of a, the timing was always wrong, thing. For example, she left to go to school in another state, then she came home, then she left for a job. When they were younger she wasn't ready for anything serious and was too busy with school or work. I know they both kind of dated other people but they always stayed close. Recently, he went to visit her and, few weeks later I found out I was going to be a grandma. I adore Tori and her and Grant are great together. I am significant other excited. Especially when I found out that Tori had decided to move back and that she was moving in with him so that they could be a family. Come Thanksgiving dinner she was at about 5 months pregnant. Jason brought Kelly along, they got back together a few months ago. Again. Tori, had just officially moved back 2 weeks prior so a lot of the family was excited to catch up with her, as she has come to a ton of family functions through the year and knew everyone. We started talking baby showers and things like that, and I made a comment about wanting to go all out for her, because this was my first grandchild. 
This is also something I want to do because Tori's mom died when she was 14 and after that she bounced around the foster system and doesn't have any real family support, so I wanted to make her feel loved and supported. Kelly jumped in and mentioned her kid would always be my first grandchild. I told her, no, that will always be your child, and if my son decides on you, I will see him as my grandchild, but they won't be my first. Tori's baby will always be my first grandchild. She threw a fit, said that my son chose a woman with kids, and they should be accepted by the family, and then said Tori basically baby trapped Grant. I told her to get back to me after they got married, or at least managed to stay together more than six months. She stormed out, son stormed out. Son and her say I'm the awe. Dinner was completely awkward for the rest of the night. ETA. Over the years, we have only seen her child a handful of times, and he was not present at this gathering. She only gets visitation with him. Not the asshole in a sense that you were right he's not your grandson since they're not even married. IDK the issues of your son's girlfriend ex if he has parents which is actually the kid's grandparents. Why is she insisting to make you the grandma? You could have chosen a better way to tell her gently but it seems you don't like her. So not the asshole out of technicality but soft you are the asshole for delivery. Lol. Not the asshole. This woman's child is not your grandchild. Not the asshole. For a mother not to have full custody or even 50-50 split usually means she must have done something really bad for the court to go that way. Or that she gave up her rights. You had mentioned that she likes drama and to be the center of attention so something must have already happened with the two of you. You also mentioned that when they get married the son will be your grandchild. Based on what was said, I would say not the asshole. Am I the asshole for not allowing my Sills kids to bring their own food to Christmas at my home? IF 31 AM gonna be honest in Christmas celebration this year. The menu is usual and everyone is familiar with it. My Sills kids are what they call the most vicious picky eaters out there. Mind you they're 6 and 9 and are probably just being deliberately difficult to their parents. Sill called to inform me that she will be bringing food for her kids to eat at Christmas dinner. I asked why and she said that they will not be able to eat anything from the menu after looking at it. I said I was sorry but there isn't enough space at the table for extra meals and besides that the kids should start learning to be more tolerant to some foods, especially at family holiday gathering where it's expected for everyone to just eat what's in front of them without complaining. She went on about how difficult kids can be, mostly can't relate but I get it. But still, she should keep in mind that it's probably a passing phase for them and so sucking it up for one dinner wouldn't affect them. She said that I don't get it and that she doesn't want them to stay hungry or feed on snacks. I apologized and declined. My husband got involved in this and is saying I'm being inconsiderate towards my guests. He said I lose nothing by allowing them to bring food but I disagree because this was not part of my plans. And if anything this should be a teachable moment for the kids to know that they can't expect to be catered for all the time. He got more upset told me that his sister is heavily reconsidering coming to a celebratory dinner where her kids weren't allowed to bring their own food. They're applying pressure on me saying I'll ruin the celebration if I keep trying to die on this hill. Am I the asshole? You are the asshole. It's not your place to provide a teachable moment. Get over yourself. She's not asking you to cook special food and is bringing it herself. Their food can be put on their plate so your no room argument makes no sense. Make sure to dress up as Scrooge for the meal. You are the asshole. My SIL's kids are what they call the most vicious picky eaters out there. Mind you they're 6 and 9 and are probably just being deliberately difficult to their parents. I stopped reading after there. You are the asshole. You are the asshole either you want to dictate what people eat or you want to enjoy your family at a holiday gathering. These posts about inhospitable hosts are getting tedious. I prepare all of our family's holiday meals and I could give a rat's backside if people bring a favorite dish or their own food. And your excuse, there isn't enough space at the table for extra meals, is ridiculous and absolute malarkey with a side of horse manure. Am I the asshole for keeping my scarf on? I'm 18F, and I'm a Muslim woman. I choose to wear a headscarf, hijab, because, well, I do. I'm studying for my finals for my senior year of HS and I was as a study group, and had to go to someone else's house to study. I'll call her Rachel. I arrive at Rachel's house, and, keep in mind, I was one of four girls coming over. At the door, Rachel's mom encourages me to remove my scarf, and Rachel follows suit. Her mom said that it made her nervous. 
I told her it was not coming off, especially since there was a man in the house. Rachel swore up and down that there wasn't, but sure enough, when I got in there, her, older, boyfriend was there. One of the other girls in the group called this out, but her mom claimed to not know he was there, which I don't understand, but, whatever I guess. Everything went pretty smoothly after that, until Rachel just texted me, claiming that her mom was having a panic attack due to my scarf and it made her boyfriend feel threatened. She told me it was her house so her rules, that I was in awe, and that I would not be welcomed back. One of the other girls is taking it next time, I know her family and they're great, but Rachel says she will not be in attendance because her mom doesn't want her near me. Am I the asshole? Edit. Thank you for all the support, I appreciate it. I also just now realized that I was unclear the boyfriend isn't Rachel's boyfriend, it is her mom's. Sorry about the weird wording. Not the asshole. You have the right to choose what you wear and to not be pressured to remove your hijab, especially in the presence of a man who is not a family member. It is not fair or respectful for Rachel's mom to ask you to remove your hijab, and it is not appropriate for her to have a panic attack over your choice of clothing. You have not done anything wrong by refusing to remove your hijab, and it is not your responsibility to make Rachel's mom or boyfriend feel comfortable. It is Rachel and her mom who are acting inappropriately and unfairly, and you are not the a-hole for standing up for your beliefs and boundaries.